welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. We'll get started so we can be somewhat prompt, only a few minutes behind. Um, I know most of you, I'm Margaret Preston, uh, president of Power Over Parkinson's, also known as Gary's Daughter. Um, thank you all for being here. We're excited to have this event. We heard, I was telling Tina, um, we've had so many rumblings over the last six, eight months about nutrition, right? What do we eat? When do we eat it? All that stuff as it relates to Parkinson's. So we're so excited that Ms. Shiver, Tina, um, has shared her time with us. She's a registered dietitian, certified integrated, integrative functional medicine, certified practitioner. She holds a master's of science degree in nutrition from JMU. Um, she also has her MF in rehabilitation counseling from VCU. Um, her education experience have helped hundreds of patients Right here in Richmond, she knows everybody at VCU and some of you as well, um, to improve the quality of their life through diagnostic testing, nutritional counseling, coaching, and supplementation. So without further ado, Tina, if you want to take it over, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, that sounds like my assistant wrote that. Okay. That sums me up. I, I have to be on my P's and Q's today. So thank you for coming. This is a great group um, for an afternoon. It's nice to have everybody here. Everybody's loving the spring and all the weather except for the pollen is getting to, to me for sure. So how many of you in the past have seen our, our registered dietitian? Ah, okay, good. Very good, hopefully it was a good experience. Good. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll walk away today with at least a couple points. I try to cover a lot of information. Um, so I'm hoping that, that you'll, you'll get something that you can take away and, and hopefully apply to your daily diet. How many of you like fruits and veggies? Right, that's good, all right, very good. How many of you like to eat out a lot? Okay, it's probably easy, right? How many of you order some of the meals, the, the meals that you can follow the recipes? So that's helpful, yeah, good. Um, how about prepackaged meals? Um, yeah, might be easier for some people. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to cover everything today. We're going to talk about key factors for eating to optimize your health. Um, I always say ditch the SAD. What does SAD stand for? The standard American diet, unfortunately. It's, it's come to that. So now we can call it the standard American diet. Now, it's shifting because there's more and more knowledge. But unfortunately... There is a lot of mixed information. And what I think is really important for most of you to hear from me, I come a long way, I've been in this practice for a long time. And I've seen diets come and go, which I'm sure many of you have as well. And so it's really important to pay attention to your body and to really good information, not bad diets, but really like the best quality for you because everybody is going to present differently, okay? It's, that's, that's important. So SAD means omit the sugar, remove the processed foods, add fiber, which can help if you're having issues with constipation or motility issues. I hear that a lot as well. I hear, I hear constipation, I hear motility issues. Um, and then I'm a big believer in phytonutrients. I'm a functional medicine practitioner. I look at the whole picture. I'm really a big supporter of food and color and really mixing it up. Why is that? Well, you have what is called a microbiome and that microbiome is kind of set for you and you can take all the probiotics in the world. Everybody know what probiotics are? Like the, the, like cultural and, and they're fine and they work for, for a lot of people, they're good support but they're not necessarily going to do the job 100%. Your diet is key to make sure that you take in enough fiber from certain foods in order to make that good bacteria to help you to help you have more elimination. That's how I look at it. Um, okay. So food is medicine. I'm sure you've heard that before as well. And it's always about increasing those vegetables and fruits. How many fruits and vegetables do you need a day? If one cup of raw is a serving of raw vegetables and a half a cup of cooked is a serving and a fruit, like a small apple or a cup of berries is a serving, 
How many do you need a day? Do you remember the five? You know where you got that from? Do you remember where that, you know who created that marketing piece? You crossed it. Five a day. They used to call it five a day. It's now eight to 12 fruits and vegetables a day. I know it sounds exhausting, doesn't it? It's a lot of chewing. Um, but eight to 12 fruits and vegetables a day. Now we're not always going to achieve that, but it's a, it's a little bit further away from five a day, isn't it? How many of you think you take in at least five a day? Okay, good, that's great. Very good, very good. Okay, so, so with nutrition, you wanna look at whole fresh unprocessed foods, seasonal, organic if you can, it's not always possible, but hopefully there are some choices. And local, I, I'm a big supporter of local. Um, fruits and vegetables, legumes, beans, peas, lentils, nuts and seeds, which make great snacks, eggs, poultry, grass-fed lean meat, wild cold water fish, and whole grains. What would wild cold water fish look like? Salmon. What else? Sardines. sardines, so good for you. Yes, good. How many of you like sardines? Boy, I wish I did. I just can't do it. Um, I can squish up some anchovies and put them in a salad dressing. <laughs> That's about it. Um, so what's the fish that you want to have less of? Tuna, because it's higher in mercury. Swordfish. Swordfish, excellent. So tuna, swordfish, any other one? Tilapia is not bad. Yeah, it's not. It's not high in mercury. It just doesn't have a lot of nutrients. It's a. I think it's. I think a lot of. I think salmon eat a lot of tilapia. But here's the trick question: Why is salmon not considered high in mercury, and tuna is? Ocean really good trick question. Ocean versus rivers. Bottom feeder versus higher. Be shocked. I was shocked because I was like, I need to maybe look this up. So it's basically because um, tuna live longer. Salmon don't live very long. So they don't have enough time to accumulate it. I thought that was fat. I was like, wow. So there is now a lot more farm raised salmon, right? And people are like, oh, no farm raised. Well, I got news for you. That's where it's heading because we are, we are overfishing. So because of that, the sources you have to be really careful about. I'm a big supporter of Yellow Umbrella, um, and I'm not trying to promote them. I don't have any connection with them, except I've known them for a long time, the, the, the company, the father started it. But I, I like them because they do a lot of research on where is it coming from? Is it a good source or not? If it's a good source and it's farm raised, is it low in mercury? That's the big question. And does it have low contaminants? And so they tend to get theirs, I believe, from New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah. Good job. You go there. Yeah. Um, and then there's a new place out that the guy that used to own the umbrella is opening up a place. And I think he's getting this from New Zealand too. So you just want to find out where's the source. That's the key. How many of you eat fish? That's awesome. One day a week, two days a week. One day. Okay. Sardines. <laughs> All right, so macronutrients are the key to energy. So your body makes energy all day long. And they're, I hate to use, get a little scientific here, but I'm gonna make it really simple. ATP is your energy source, just know ATP. You make 36 units a day. If you don't take in, enough carbohydrates, fats, and protein, you don't make 36 units. You, you make 30 units or you make 25 units. How many of you sometimes can get tired during the day? So it's important that you take a look at the fact that you're eating enough and you're eating enough protein, carbs, and fat. And we're all in this together. She's the young one over here. I said, she, you have me beat. <laughs> and then there's two in the back that are young. Yeah, yeah. I said, you're back at you. 
But here's the bottom line. As we age, we have to take in more protein. If We don't have to, but we should. And if we don't, we're going to break muscle down. And we're going to break muscle down faster than they are. They can get by with less. We cannot. So it's really important for you to focus in on that and think about, am I getting enough protein sources? And what will protein be? I'm going to budget. Good, good. I'm going to get to that so it makes more sense. So, all right, let's keep going. There's so your energy cycle needs carbs, fat, protein, vitamins, minerals. So let's first talk about sources of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are what? What'd you say? Starches. Starches, which are sweet potato, potatoes, brown, grains, brown rice, wild rice, quinoa, barley, vegetables like broccoli, zucchini, squash. Fruits are considered carbohydrates. What else? Am I missing something? I don't know. Dairy is considered, sorry, this is so, so dairy products tend to be more, the only problem with dairy products, they tend to be more constipated. They're calcium source, right? They're a great calcium source that are good for those. Uh, but there are other alternative dairy sources or non-dairy sources like which, which ones? Almond milk, cashew milk. How many of you use dairy? And it doesn't bother you. You don't feel like it. Okay, good. Oat milk is not my favorite. It, it's a big marketing. They're making a lot of money. It's good for them, but I'm not going to contribute. So oat milk is what? Think about it. I want everybody to think about oat milk. It's oats soaked in water. And then they add canola oil. Yeah. They add canola oil that thicken it. Now there are two companies that make oat milk that don't do, that use mostly oats, but they still have to add a filler to make it thicker, or it's going to be disgusting. It's going to be like dirty water, right? So I'm not a good they're very good at it. A lot of these young yuppies love oat milk. <laughs> They love it. Now, almond milk and cashew milk are great sources for those people that need non-dairy. However, they add calcium carbonate to a lot of them, which is fine, but that can constipate some people. Calcium carbonate can be a form of constipation. So you just want to look at that and say, okay, is this an issue for me? And if it is, then I'm, I want to make sure that I balance it. So Dairy products tend to have carbohydrates in them and protein. That's the beauty of dairy products. Milk, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese. What else? Sour cream. Sour cream is not a lot of protein, but it's more of a fat. Cream cheese. Same thing. How many of you like Greek yogurt? Good source of protein. How many of you buy Greek yogurt with fruit? Good source of sugar. <laughs> so be careful. Good. Look at the, you gotta look at that label. Yeah. At too good uh, Greek yogurt, it doesn't have as much. So you've got too sugar. good, you have Chobani all natural, yeah. low sugar, and you have Siggy has a low sugar one. And then there's another one, which is um, triple zero. It's by um, Dan and I think. So there's a lot. Now they are using stevia. So those of you that don't like stevia, the sweetener, you might not like it. So then by plain, and what could you add to it? A little bit of honey, right? Add a little bit of honey and then use whole, whole milk. I want to know. It depends. Yeah. You could, if you're, doing, if, if you're watching your weight, you want to watch out for the whole milk yogurts if you're eating a lot of it. You just want to balance it. If you're watching your cholesterol, want to watch out for the whole milk because it's higher in saturated fat. So make sure that you um that you take a look at that. So you could do fat free two percent or whole. Doesn't matter, they're all going to have the same amount of protein. Just different amounts of fat. But they are loaded with calcium. So focus on fiber. I'm a big I always have been. I'm a big supporter of fiber, 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 fiber. 
So you get fiber from fruit. That's why you want eight to 12 a day. You get fiber from vegetables, from beans, peas, and lentils, nuts and seeds, and whole grains. I feel like, oh, vegetables would be starchy or non-starchy. Any other sources of fiber that I'm missing? That, that actually, this is it. So nuts and seeds, flax, chia, flax seed, chia seed, hemp hearts are gonna be pretty high in fiber, yes. Are peanuts a tea or a nut? They're a legume. So they are, they are considered a legume, but you know what? They are actually high in fiber. And um, and they have they're also also high in monounsaturated fat. The big uh, what's the word I'm looking for? People that don't that recommend that you don't eat peanuts for dinner, which I used to do. You know, you jump on that bandwagon. You're like, oh, but they're moldier. They have a lot more mold. So people that have allergies to mold, you tend I tend to say remove them and see if it makes a difference. It might not. But they tend to be a, have a lot more mold. If you've ever seen the peanut shell, it's covered with mold. And if it's not, then they they colored it. Okay. But almond butter. Almond butter is great. So you have almond butter, peanut butter, cashew butter, tahini, all kinds of nut butters. Makes a great snack for sure. Um, whole grains would be like whole wheat flour, whole wheat bread, um, rye. Sourdough bread is also really good. It's great for the gut. Uh, it supports good bacteria. So it is considered a probiotic or it has some probiotics in it, I should say. So it helps support. So how do you increase fiber? What's the importance? Believe it or not, fiber is to considered anti-inflammatory for your system. That's one of the purposes. Some people are like, well, it helps me eliminate. Well, yeah, it's, it's, you have soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. And insoluble helps you eliminate, soluble helps the stool pop up. Helps to clear cholesterol out, helps to balance blood sugar, helps to slow blood sugar from going up and coming down fast. So fiber is important to include it every, at, at each meal if you can. It actually decreases the energy density of the diet. So in other words, what the glycemic index means, it's blood sugar. It stops the blood sugar from going up high and coming down fast. So it stops your pancreas from having to overwork and make too much insulin. So those of you that have trouble with blood sugar, that's something to consider. Add more fiber to your diet and that can help balance your blood sugar out. The actual structures of fibers may have anti-inflammatory activities. So remember this, prebiotics are basically fiber. So prebiotics make eventually good bacteria. So you have to eat certain fibers in order to make a good bacteria unless you want to take a pill. And I would recommend that you eat the fiber. Take, take the fiber in from the food. Promotion of growth of commensal bacteria, which, which helps support immune system. So you always wanna support your immune system as much as you can in this day and time, because again, you know, we're getting hit with all kinds of stuff in the air. Uh, the flu, type A, B, what is it? Flu, A, B, respiratory, COVID. Yeah, it, it goes on and on um, out there. So here's how you increase it. The soluble fiber, which helps puff up your stool, is comes from oat bran, believe it or not, lima beans, tofu, black beans, and Brussels sprouts. They're gonna be higher. All your vegetables and fruit are gonna have soluble fiber, but these tend to be a little bit higher. And then your insoluble is gonna be like a wheat bran, navy beans, lentils, and peas. Look at wheat bran, it's 12.5. So any, I probably, you probably don't want to share this, so I, I won't ask you to raise your hand. But if you have constipation issues, I've got a great recipe to help with, with elimination. It's a great recipe. And you use wheat bran with the mix. Use wheat bran, you use applesauce, and you use prune juice. And you mix it, and you have a tablespoon a day, and it completely can help with constipation. 
Yeah, it's working. Some people it doesn't work, but for most people it has. What about that? We talked, so we were getting ready to talk about protein and I jumped into carbs. So protein is an essential nutrient that's needed for growth, repair, and support of your body tissues. So it supports muscle. And again, we, our muscle starts to decrease as we age. And I'm a big believer in supporting muscle because it helps when if we fall, then maybe it can help from a strength standpoint in, in preventing a, like a break, possibly. Okay, so protein's needed to make hormones, enzymes, and it's help, it's really important to help with your immune, immune system. So where does protein come from? Eggs was one example. Meat, fish. Meat, fish, eggs, cottage cheese, yogurt, milk. Protein powder. Protein powder. Um, shrimp, seafood, but we said fish, chicken, turkey, lamb, pork, bison, venison. For those of you that love venison. Those would all be sources, tofu, tempeh is a source of tofu, edamame, beans have protein, believe it or not. So the RDA is low for protein needs. Low, RDA is low across the board for most everything, but it's definitely low for protein needs. And I usually use a little bit of a, or a lot higher um, percentage. So what I usually do is, is tell somebody to take their weight Divide it into, or your weight, you want to figure out what your kilograms are. And that's 2.2. So you multiply your weight by 2.2 kilograms, and then you multiply that by a factor of 1.6. And most people need probably between 80 and 150 grams of protein a day. It's more than most people realize. Yeah, it's a lot more. So again, you have to be careful because too much protein and not enough fluids and not enough fiber can cause constipation. Want to be something that yeah, we're not finding we really just eat the regular meal or like meat, fish. The protein is still not enough. And uh, if you eat too much meat, like a chicken, your fat, the amount of the fat will be too much. So what I'm doing now is using the protein powder. So with my coffee. The collagen? Uh, the collagen and also the weed. The weed. The whey and, protein. Yeah. Whey protein. So I'm giving those. So let's go. Let me just throw that out there. How many of you use protein powder? So you want to be careful about the source. I'm very, very, very careful about the source and where it's coming from. Because you know all, you want to be careful about quality assurance. The second thing you want to be careful about is if it's not a whey protein and it's a pea protein, like a plant-based protein, you want to start to make sure that it has all of the branch chain amino acids. So your protein is made up of amino acids. That, those are key, that's really what you need in order to, to repair muscle breakdown. The key ones, the ones you have to get from food, are, there are nine of them. The number one is leucine. It's L-E-U-C-I-N-E, -E, leucine. That's number one for tissue repair. A lot of the plant-based protein powders don't have enough. So therefore, if you don't take it in from other sources, you've got a deficiency. Whey protein usually does, but it's, I usually want to make sure it's listed. And you need at least 2,500 milligrams. So keep that in mind. And in the morning, you need 2,500 milligrams. I want you to all think about this. When you go to bed at night, this is another trick question. When you go to bed at night, going to sleep, your body has to live, but you're not eating unless you get up to go eat, but most of us don't, right? What is your body living off of? What are your organs, your heart, your muscle, what do they live off of? Okay, so they so they live off of fat stores. We had a, we have enough fat stores 
the glasses, but the fat stores are usually used for organs, right? They're going to live off of glycogen, which comes from carbohydrates, which is stored in the muscle and the liver. So they've got that, and the brain lives off of glycogen. What's the muscle live off of? Where does the muscle get its amino acids? We cannot store amino acids. We cannot store protein. We can only store fat and glycogen as, as from carbohydrates. So therefore the muscle gets nothing. So in the morning, is your are your muscles going to be in a catabolic breakdown or an anabolic, anabolic state build? Catabolic. Yes. So if you don't get enough protein that morning, it doesn't have to be from meat. It can come from plant sources. It doesn't matter as long as you're taking it enough to interrupt the catabolic state that can happen throughout the day. Intermittent fasting is a great example that I'm not 100% on. We're going to talk about it today. But I'm not all there in that you have to be careful, right? If you're doing a lot of working out, you're built, if that's the case, you want to be careful. If you, you know, break your fast at like 10 or 11 o'clock, that's a different story. But you want to make sure you take in enough. That's the bottom line. And you need at least 30 grams in the morning. Some people need more based on their activity and their size and so male versus female, et cetera. At least 30. Okay, so how about fats? You know, they were the bad deal when I was back when I started my my I did my thesis on um dairy, with the dairy uh the dairy council. And um, they were all about back in that day. They were it was mostly they were only studying men and heart attacks. Women weren't in the picture because we were having as many heart attacks for some reason back then. Um, but anyway, long story short, it was fat free. Everything remember that everything's fat free. So they took all the fats out. It was really interesting. Virginia Tech had a study on men, and they were like, "That's great. It's lowering their cholesterol. They're doing great." Well, what happened? They ended up with diabetes. <laughs> and high triglyceride levels. It didn't work out so well. Very interesting. So then that led to the Atkins diet, right? Drink it off, my God. We can't wait, right? <laughs> and he died of a heart attack. That's correct. Can I just say something? Sure. This is, wow. I am 69. I have severe osteo. I realize now when I was in my teens, they told me not to drink milk products because it made my face break out. And then, I mean, that's what, so here I am, all the, I didn't realize that, so I didn't drink milk much or milk products. So this is what you're. Well, the dairy council, when that, I worked for the dairy. No, the dairy council that I, when I worked for them, it was mostly about fat free. So it was fat free yeah. milk, fat free cottage yeah. cheese. Fat, yes. But the calcium was still in it. Calcium oh, wasn't coated. Okay. So people I still took in the dairy. We still promoted dairy daily. Because I was working, you know, I was getting paid by the dairy council. So, so they were calcium was still okay. The calcium was still in it. But interesting, they, there's a there's new research on that too. So I can talk about that at the end. Um, everybody, any questions about that so far? So fats, healthy fats support the brain. Four types, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, saturated, and trans fats. You don't really see trans fats anymore. They're pretty much have been removed because they're pretty toxic. Um, they're cheap, so but they finally, you know, got the food industry to, to remove it. You see saturated fat, you see poly, and you want a balance of all three. Saturated fat actually makes hormones, so you don't want to not have saturated fats. Um, you just don't want to have too many of them from a cardiovascular standpoint. These are your monounsaturated fats. I'm a big supporter of olive oil, avocado oil, it's walnut oil, almond oil, avocados, nuts and seeds. Those are your main ones. Um, you just have to be careful about olive oil because you don't want to cook it at a high temperature. So the avocado oil would be better. But you always want to have a higher amount of monounsaturated fat than a certain amount of poly 
which is mainly going to come from from vegetables. Um, and they usually, so it would be like safflower oil, sunflower oil, pumpkin seed oil, um, any of those would be considered a polyunsaturated fat. There are two types, omega, there's omega-3 are broken down into two other fatty acids. So you also have EPA, DHA, which are fatty acids, really good for the brain. Where do you get EPA, DHA from fish? Flax. Soy actually has EPA, DHA. And what else? Walnuts. How many of you like walnuts? Yeah, I'm a big supporter of walnuts. High in monounsaturated fat, high in um, EPA, DHA, great for the brain. So what decreases the conversion of omega-3? So you, when you eat omega-3, it has to convert. There's a conversion that goes on, and it becomes what is known as from EPA, it goes to DHA. And what will decrease the conversion is too much alcohol, too many saturated fats, and too many trans fats. So a good rule of thumb when you're looking at your labels is that for every 100 calories, one or less grams of saturated fat. So your saturated fat should probably be between 15 and 30 a day. If you're eating red meat every day and you're eating butter every day and you're eating, what else has saturated fat? Eggs every day, then you might be in a little bit of trouble, but you know, you might not. Everybody is different and everybody has a different makeup and a different DNA. So, all right, let's go to this one. So eat more good fat, olive oil, nuts and seeds, avocado oil, olives. How many of you like olives? Great snack. They did a research on olives and they found that eating so many a day or eating a tablespoon or two tablespoons of olive oil a day using it, it actually decreased cardiovascular risk. I think it was by 30%. It was really interesting. So eat the olives, coconut oil, coconut, your omega-3 would be your fatty fish, um, deep green vegetables, like your edamame, your soybeans would be an example, spinach, kale, bok choy, and then your seeds and your walnuts. But See, co coconut oil has made it back to the favorite olive oil. So <laughs> not yet, but I'm glad you, I was not gonna go into it, but I'll go ahead and, since you've mentioned it and brought it up, coconut oil is debatable. I should have put debatable. I cannot touch coconut oil because it will make my cholesterol go up 100 points. And I already have high cholesterol. So I can't touch it. And I've done the study myself. So you have to be careful. Moderation. A little bit of coconut oil goes a long way. Does it help with thyroid? No. Does it, it, do, it doesn't have any of those benefits like they say. Does it help with brain? That's debatable. We don't know that, but you're right. When when I was growing up, coconut oil was like bad news. And now it's about balance. It really is. It works for some people. Some people, it doesn't touch their cholesterol and they can use it and it's fine. So how do you get bad fat out? Um, watch the processed foods, watch the crackers, watch the cookies, watch the deep fried food. The health food cereals can sometimes be loaded with saturated fats, french fries. Reduce your intake of saturated fats like meats, butter, cheese, shortening. Grandmother, you know, she'd have the can of shortening on her stove. Um, increase your intake of omega-3 because that helps balance it because you're gonna take in some saturated fat. There's a few clients of mine that don't touch it, but they've had um, triple bypasses. So that's driven them to really stay away from saturated fats. You know, they, everybody has a drive, right? Um, so, talked about that. Phytonutrients, really important. I'm all about color. You have a sheet today on phytonutrients. It's a nice checklist. If you're interested and you want more info, email me and I will send you a great recipe packet on phytonutrients. So phytonutrients provide many functions, including Stimulating enzymes to help the, get the body get rid of toxins. So stimulating the enzymes to help break your food down is a, probably the best way so your stomach feels better. 
boosts the immune system, improves cardiovascular health, and it can help support cognition as well. And here's some rich sources. And again, it's all about color, colors of the rainbow. Even sweet potato falls in as a phytonutrient. So you got sweet potato, you have avocado, you have eggplant, you have peppers. Go to the grocery store, and when you walk in to the right of Publix or Kroger, it's to the right. I gotta think about all the grocery stores. Food lines to the right. They're all about to the right. This, this is a pretty big department. Try to check that out first. Check out the color. What the new research is showing is that for your microbiome, in order to feed it, in order to make enough of the right combination of strains, good bacteria, for your microbiome, you want to diversify. You want to change the type of fruits and vegetables that you eat daily. So if you're eating broccoli every day, change it up. Throw in some Brussels sprouts. Throw in some spinach. Throw in some peppers. Throw in some pickles. Throw something else in there in order to feed that microbiome a little differently. Fruit and vegetable section, there you go. There it is, loaded. Colors of the rainbow. If you're looking to increase red foods, for example, add tomatoes, something called goji berries, raspberries, pomegranate seeds. Go local, go seasonal. What's coming out now are strawberries. They're not really local. I don't know where they're coming from. Probably California, I guess. But go local. So strawberries should come in June, May, June. Yeah, probably May, June, depending on the weather. Um, but May, June. And then July, you see blackberries and you see blueberries. And then in September, you see apples. Try to, try to switch that around. Put marinara sauce on your veggies because that's tomatoes. Make a Mediterranean salad with tomatoes, onion, garlic, herbs, and feta. Um, snack ideas, watermelon slices, raspberries, cherries, strawberries, and apple slices, and add it to some Greek yogurt. If you don't want dairy, use an almond yogurt or a cashew yogurt. Switch it up. Ways to increase orange, increase orange foods. Sweet potato instead of a potato. Sweet potato has more beta carotene, more vitamin A. Good for the eyes, good for the brain. Put orange slices in your water pitcher. Drink carrot and our orange juice. Be careful about orange juice though because of the sugar. And it can be a little bit more acidic. Have a clementine. Peaches will be in season in the summer. Puree carrots, butternut squash, and our pumpkin. Go for the tropical fruit smoothie. You can also, instead of using protein powder for a smoothie, add yogurt instead. And that, that, that's very tasty. Make a trail, mi trail mix and include some dried fruits, but make sure if they're dried fruits, they don't have a lot of added sugar because they're already sweet. Increasing yellow foods, bananas, which are very high in potassium, um, slices of a golden delicious apple, yellow pepper, have Yukon gold, golden potatoes because they have more yellow, grate ginger into a stir fry, make a ginger tea, or have pineapple slices as a dessert or grill the pineapple slices for something a little different. Maybe put a dollop of ice cream on there instead of a bowl of ice cream. And then more green foods. So this is the last one. Broccoli, spinach, bok choy, soup with added greens. How many of you have experimented with microgreens? So microgreens, I buy them at the farmer's market. I did buy them at the farmer's market until I was like, I can grow these myself. So I have a tray that they just went wild. And they're really, really, really high in um, nutrients. So you've got your lettuce, which is has good nutrients. Iceberg lettuce doesn't have much. But then you have your green lettuces that have more. And then your microgreens are going to be like double, triple. Broccoli is going to have good nutrients. Broccoli rob has more. Broccoli sprouts have even more. So the more sprouts, the more nutrients. And sometimes it gives a salad a nice crunch. Oh, pesto is another one. Add it to a stir fry or spread or sourdough bread with some sliced avocado or whole wheat bread. I want to just touch on fasting a little bit. How many of you do intermittent fasting? Okay, one person. Okay. So 
it's different for different people. You have to be very careful. You want to work with somebody if you do that. Is it beneficial for some people? It is, especially if they're not getting a ton of activity. Um, it did not work for me, but I try to do a 12 hour. That's pretty easy, right? If you eat at six, then you can eat at six the next morning. And why is that? What's the purpose of the fast? Basically, it's to give the body a rest at night. That's all. It's really to just give the brain a rest and to give the body a rest. Only thing I want to be careful about with that is for any of you is that at dinner time, that means you must take in enough protein. If you do not, you are going to have major breakdown of muscle the next morning, which is what I found. It was not good. I, I mean, I was tired. I was like, why am I so tired all the time and needing to drink more coffee? Like this is against like, and that's what the people do. They drink coffee all day. Right. So I'm like, that just, just doesn't. So I stopped it and I felt amazing. I was like, this feels much better. So 12 hours, some people do 14 to 16. Again, you have to be careful and make sure that you take in enough calories. Um, and the purpose again is to rest the body. Mostly again, for the brain to be able to detoxify a little bit. There's your nine cups of vegetables and fruits a day. I gave y'all a little break. Instead of 12, I gave it, I put went in the middle to nine. Oops. So greens, here's the different ones you've got in greens. They have K1, important in, in your myelin. Production of, sorry, production of calcium, influx in bones and teeth, carotenoids and magnesium, um, color. So blue, purple, black are associated with increased cognitive performance. And then sulfur act, activates what are known as natural killer cells. So it improves detoxification. It increases something called glutathione, which is the mitochondria of your, of your cell. It helps improve that um, and enhances what is known as neuroprotection. So broccoli, bok choy, cat, red cabbage, blueberries, onions, shiitake mushrooms, cabbage, mix it up. Wild fish, grass-fed meat, smash, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. Hard to find herring today. We used to catch it in the, when, when it would run and have salted herring, it was the best. So it's hard to find that fine herring today, but it's pretty young. It's really good for you. Prebiotics we talked about. Their um, pre prebiotics are the fiber rich foods that probiotics feed and grow on. Here are some good examples of prebiotics, asparagus, not ripe banana, but green banana, dandelion greens, they're out now. I found some at the store, eggplant, endive, garlic, honey, jicama, kefir, kefir is a, like a liquid yogurt, uh, leeks, legumes, so your beans, your onions, your peas, your whole grains, like your, whole, your whole wheat breads, um, your oats would be another good source, and your yogurt. Yogurt's going to have a be a prebiotic and a probiotic, so you get the best of both worlds. There's this list as well of all your prebiotics and probiotics. So these are the good box, which we call probiotics. We can constantly replenish these good bugs. Really important. Probiotics are transient. They don't hang out for long. They get rid of the bad bacteria then they're gone. Then you have to make new. So if you don't make new, then you're de deficient and you could end up with stomach issues, diarrhea, constipation, gut issues. What about apple cider vinegar? Apple cider vinegar is, yeah, that's considered a probiotic. Isn't that, mm, no, it's not. It's a vinegar. Vinegars are not considered probiotics. So it's a great question. Fermented vegetables are fermented from salt. So that's, that it's a little different, um, even though, you know, it's a, I say that, and I'm not 100% sure on that. I promote apple cider vinegar, mostly to help with hydrochloric acid and to help break down the bacteria in the stomach. So it doesn't have a lot of the benefits it says on Google, no, it does not. That has not been proven yet. If it feel, makes you feel good, great. Probiotics. Or right here. So like things like sauerkraut, sour cream, tempeh, yogurt, kombucha, miso, natto, anything pickled. 
your milks, your acidophilus milk, your buttermilk, cheese, especially if it's aged, cottage cheese, fermented meats, fermented vegetables, again, kefir and kimchi. Tips for healthier eating, 12 hour fast, protein intake, at least half your body weight in ounces. Stop eating three hours before bed, if you can help it. Give your body a little rest. Eat 20 to 30% less calories if need be. Um, remove sugar, remove sugar, remove sugar. Not good for the brain, not good for blood sugar, not good for, for overall cognition. Eat organic when you can, eat nine fruits and vegetables daily, and eat plenty of good fats. I told you, her I'd give you 15 minutes for questions, I'm, I'm close. So I know I went through this fast. Any questions? That recipe again that you said with the beef bran, what was that? Just email me. Okay. I'll send you because it's a it's a um you're using prune juice, applesauce, and wheat bran or oat bran, but it's portions. Okay, gotta get to that. Yes. Where, where does pasta go in? Oh, pasta. So, uh, pasta the whole, so pasta is considered a starch. It's a grain. And you want it, if you're going to have pasta, have semolina, right? The, 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 have the whole grain pasta. Try to find a pasta with fiber in it. Or if you have regular white pasta, add vegetables to it. Balance it with fiber. That's key. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people are eating bean pasta these days, but that's sacrilegious to an Italian. Um, I had an Italian client come in. Well, he's from New York. And I said, how about cauliflower pizza? I guess I didn't know what I was saying. And he looked at me. He's like, don't ever mention that to me. That's <laughs> kidding. Where is dark chocolate in all of this? It's a good question. So dark chocolate, 70% are more dark. Um, because the less sugar, the, obviously the better, but it's, yeah, it's considered an antioxidant nutrient. There's a lot of re research on it. Is it beneficial to a certain point? It, it takes away from you eating white sugar. So it's, it's better in that sense. Is it going to, is it going to make that much of a difference? Probably not, but it, it's not going to hurt you. It's the, I'm very, yes. I think that either multi or some type of B vitamin, um, you just want to be careful about the fillers in a multi. So you want to look and make sure that there aren't like all these ingredients that you can't, that you can't um, pronounce and that you're getting, you're getting a good quality. Product. So I think it's needed in today's time because we can't get our needs met. Um, a lot of the fruits and vegetables don't have a lot of nutrients like they used to. And some people feel good on a multi body. So, yes. What about canola oil? Is it good? It's mixed. It's a mixed bag. So, it's a monounsaturated fat. In my world, in the functional medicine world, it's not a great thing. In my world, you still have to step out of that and say, okay, it's, you know, I don't think it's the worst thing you can have, right? Grape seed oil is not the best. That's considered like a rape seed. That's, that comes from another. But the canola oil, you can cook it at a higher temperature. So it, I think it's better. Yeah, it's mono, mono texture. I use olive oil too, but, but it's a nice fat. You have to use that probably for for high heat. And, uh, and it's better, it's not as bitter as avocado oil. Do you have a multi vitamin for it? You can email. Well, I can I can give you a list. Yes. With the 12 hour fast, at the other parts you were saying it's the I thought that you said it's really not good to do a 12 hour fast. No, no, sorry. It's not good to do a 16 to 24 hour. Oh, 16 to 24. But, but 12 hour is your best bath. So is it better than to do your protein or in the morning because you're Muscles are not as in great shape, or should you do it at time so they can do it? So she said, Is it better to do your protein in the morning or at night? Both. You have to, more, midday, it does, you need a little protein midday, or your blood sugar is going to drop, right? But morning and night are key. And why is that? Think about it. You want to eat enough protein so that you're, when you go to bed, your body, your muscles don't go into that catabolic state so quickly. So if you're deficient going into bed, then you're going to be really deficient that morning. So at least 30 grams in the morning, 
at least 30, maybe 40 at night. What about dried fruits? Are they good? They're good as long as they don't have added sugar. And you couple them with some nuts or some form of protein, or if, if you have blood sugar issues. If you don't, it's better to do fresh fruit, without a doubt. But dried fruit, if you're looking to replace it with sugar, it is still sugar. I mean, the fruit is considered a simple carbohydrate. White sugar, brown sugar, honey, maple syrup. What else? Agave. They are simple sugars and fruits in that list too. Fruit is not, not a simple sugar. It raises the blood sugar like that. To any of you that has a glucose monitor, you can see it. I've seen it. It goes like that. It has the positive about fruit is that it has nutrients in it. It has antioxidants and nutrients in it. So you're getting a lot of good stuff. But you've got to watch that blood sugar piece. That's the only piece that I would, I would say. So if you're going to have the fruit, couple it with a little bit of protein or the nuts or some kind of fat to stop it from making that blood sugar come up and down. As we age, our blood sugar is going to go up. So we want to prevent that as much as we can. Go ahead. What are good kinds of cereals? Uh, none. No, I'm kidding. Um, good, good kinds of cereals. Anything with fiber. So here's the rule of thumb. For every 100 calories, five or less grams of sugar, and at least three grams of fiber. So their label, or their, whoever the cereal company is, their label is based on their serving size, not based on the um, exchange system. So if they say a cup is a serving and it's 250 calories and 10 grams of sugar, that's a lot. So one serving is about, usually a serving of cereal is about 80 to 100 calories. So it could be a half cup, it could be a cup. More fiber, the better. That's, that's the key, I think. So if it's a rice check, it's pretty much sugar. As far as I'm concerned. So fermented food, even though it's starch, it's a lot of solids. Okay. Fermented food, because they make it with a lot of salt. As long, the only thing you have to be careful about is blood. If you have high blood pressure, you have to be careful about salt if that's part of your issue. Some people, if they decrease their salt intake, their blood pressure can sometimes go down. You just want to be aware of that. But usually, most of your kimchi and your fermented vegetables are not salty tasting. They're using it to ferment them. It's being used to it salt drainage. But it's going to it's going to change in the composition because you're going to you're going to make a kimchi essentially a week. In some areas, it takes more than that, but in our it's usually about a week. So it's going to it's it's going to ferment, it's going to break down. Yes. I have a question because um, I read somewhere saying you know the Parkinson's patient because you have the tremor, uh, you need to maintain your weight. Keep up your weight. Uh, so I I haven't watched my weight in the last uh, half year, and I gained eighteen pounds. Ten pounds? Yeah. So right now uh, that's the reason I'm starting the uh, sixty-eight uh, uh, fasting. Try to uh, you know get the weight control. So my question is, do we need watch our weight? To make sure. Because I saw the tremor will burn of the weight. I didn't say that. that one. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm a big, I, again, I work with a lot of physicians that neurologists that work with Parkinson's, and I go by their, if they think a person needs to lose weight, they're going to let me know that. Or if they think somebody needs to gain weight or maintain, they're going to let me know that. I go by their, their recommendation. Um, or if somebody comes in to see me on their own, I'll reach out to the physician and say, this is where we are and get some feedback because the physician knows you better than any of us. Um, so that's, that's, it's a great question. And that happens to, I've seen a handful of Parkinson patients over the last year that have gained weight and they're uncomfortable and they don't want, and they didn't do it because of that, they just gained the weight. And so we've been able to shift it and, but it didn't change any. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. Have you heard that before? 
Or um, yeah, I think it probably depends on the patient, I would think, from yeah. a weight standpoint yeah. and genetic factors. So, yeah. yes. So, my husband has trouble with blood pressure regulation, which is one of the two parts in neurologic mistakes. And so, one of his neurologists will recommend to do the six small meals a day. How do you do that? Because that's, that's really tough. That's a great eye question. And that sometimes is recommended also for motility issues. If a person has, has have a very slow motility, with food, then six small meals. You just break them up. You just do like 200, 300 calories at each meal. You just break it down as far as what they would eat. Instead of eating, like in the morning, they have an egg and a piece of toast, and then two hours later, they might have fruit with a little bit of yogurt, and then two hours later. So instead of a full meal, it's like half. Yes. I don't know if you've seen this, but balance the nature kills the. Oh, it's fruit and vegetables. I have, and I'm not a big supporter. <laughs> I've never tried it. But... It's expensive. I'll buy it. Yeah, don't price. I use real food. It's They can't replace it. There, there are some clients that will use greens. The only greens that I like, and I think they do a pretty good job and they're reasonably priced, is Amazing Grass. I think it's a pretty good product. Um, they put a lot of fiber and they're putting a lot of greens, but are you getting your needs? No way. I don't know how they even get by with saying that. I'm surprised. Yes. I'll ask the elephant in the room. What do we do about dessert? Oh. Um, my <laughs> father, for example, loves his sweets. So oh, what how do we how do we intake a dessert without kind of killing everything we've just worked really hard on? So one thought is to use yogurt and fruit as a dessert some nights. So have you know limit your instead of having it every night. Maybe have it twice a week or three times a week or find a healthier snack like oat muffins or um, a blueberry muffin, something that has fiber in it, something that you can balance. Um, a lot of my clients will do a, a coconut yogurt because it's a little bit sweeter and they'll take that and put some nuts and seeds in it and then add some fruit. That way you still get color and you still get even a probiotic and a prebiotic and you're not eating a ton of sugar. I'm not a big supporter of sugar. I, I, I'm just not. I've seen what it's done to a lot of my clients over 30 years time frame. And you know, it, it, a person has to choose, right? But I think that it's okay to have in moderation. It's not about all or nothing. And a client come in today and believe it or not, he's down to not eating candy all day. And he's down to eating yogurt and fruit but he's not going to not have his gelates with his son every meal. So it's, you know, it's, can that be done? Yeah, he's 60 something years old and he made that shift. And that was because of some health concerns, mainly. So is it going to change anything for you? It could, in the sense that if it stabilizes blood sugar a little bit more, then you could feel better. Overall, your, your energy might go up a little bit. That's one ball. One, somebody else have a question? I think we have one over Zoom and it might be a good concluding question. Um, so the person says it's a lot to think about 50 to 100 years ago. We didn't have to think about it as hard. Um, food was just naturally healthy. I can't believe it's not fire. Now we have all these things, right? What is the simple advice? So maybe a takeaway or two without thinking too much on what to eat. So it's like summarize your hour in <laughs> what's it, what's it, uh, it increase fiber, mm -hmm. decrease sugar and balance your, try to balance your food throughout the day. Keep food record. If you can record or take food records and take a look at maybe over a week's time of what you've had to eat and then say, okay, I can tweak it here, tweak it there. And that's going to give me a little bit more nutrition. Take it one step at a time. But again, fiber and lowering sugar are two big, big takeaways. I have a question. If a 20 to 30% of less calories than- Depends. I mean, if somebody's eating 2,000, uh -huh. then that's 1,600 instead of 2,000. Okay. It depends on their activity level. It depends on their age. It depends on their weight, their height. It really- a lot of factors, but the newest research is showing that when we eat less, remember we eat more in our country. And so by taking more and eating what you're supposed to eat less, 
then you're not really eating less, you're eating really what you're supposed to eat. And that the research is showing that that decreases a lot of disease based on blood sugar, cholesterol, heart disease, et cetera. Yes. And, um, some people like to supplement their meals or you know, if they're having trouble gaining weight or maintaining weight, if we ensure fun, you recommend those? That's a tough question for me, sorry. Um, I would not recommend that. Okay. But other dietitians might. So it just depends on who you talk to. I would probably go a healthier route. Because okay. Insure has a lot of carbs. It has a lot of sugar in it. Oh, okay. So that's the only thing. Now, if it were somebody who was malnourished and that's all they could take in, and they had um they had a lot of um, breakdown in their system, then yeah, that might be the only choice that they would have. So I would not, I would not nod. I shouldn't say I would never, but for most people, I would I would probably find another another option. There's a lot more options on the market today that are healthier and that have a lot more nutrients. Do you have copies of these slides? I think you're comfortable. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. The mount, we, we can send them out. Yeah, absolutely. You said you have it. I have. Yep. Yeah. Margaret has a copy. So sure. Last question. Spreads. Like Dave's spread. Do you like? So Dave's spread is another marketing scheme, right? It's great. Dave's killer bread. Everybody loves it. It's wonderful. Good for him. Four grams of protein. And most bread has some protein in it. He's added oats to bump the protein up. Is it a protein source? No. It's a bread source. It's a carbohydrate. So I'm not against it. But there's always other choices. It's pricey. I think it's a little pricey yeah. for what you asked for. So I, I think that you can, Nature's Own has a great whole wheat bread that has plenty of fiber. There's a new wrap out that I love called, I don't know the name because it's new to me, but it's, I found it at um, Extreme Wellness. And I found it at Publix. Apparently Costco has it too. 12 grams of fiber. And you can pronounce every ingredient in it. And it's, it's completely coming from food um, and it's tasty. So that's, I like stuff like that and it's not pricey, pricey, but I like good quality breads, don't get me wrong. But is Dave's better than others? There's others out there that you can choose. I'm a big supporter of sourdough bread. Make your own. If you can make your own, that, that's always good. Go to the farmer's market, you know, that's always a good thing. All right, if you have, everybody's good. If you have other questions, shoot me an email. You all have my card. If you don't, I have more. Um, but you've been wonderful. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. I want to thank our industry partners who are here, Amnil, Accorda, and Medtronic. So feel free to chat with them. We've got the room for a little while longer. So chat and get to know our partners and in the business. Thank you so much for your support. Sure.